and we're back. Combat is a lot faster just because the animations go through a lot faster. It really speeds things up. Felix's battle theme here. A lot better than the first one in my opinion. I was actually in a Super Smash Bros. Brawl. They went and took the final boss music from this game and Felix's battle theme and made a little medley out of it. And we have the rather obvious whirlwind wall here. Uh, Felix is basically identical to Isaac, and Sheba is basically identical to, identical to Ivan. Jenna has differences from Garrett, and uh, your fourth party member is different from Mia. And we have our first mimic. When you're fighting a single enemy, you're pretty much always going to want to use Fume with Jenna, and probably use Shiva's synergy too, because Fume is basically like Ragnarok and Heatwave from the first game. a single target spell that does more damage than a regular attack. I guess he fell down while he was trying to jump over these things. I don't know why he didn't just float, considering that, you know, he can float.
So what happens in this room is when you cover up, well normally neither of the platforms can push you up far enough, but when you cover one, the other one will receive more pressure and push the platform higher. Which takes us to this, the mysterious card. There are three items like this in the game. They change your class without being influenced by Dijini. Or they are influenced by Dijini, but it's not a regular type. So we're gonna give this to Jenna and use it to change her class. I'll probably stop using it after a little while because they're kind of hard to use throughout the whole game. They're not that efficient. It's just kind of a fun little thing to do. And since I didn't experiment with classes at all in the first game, I'm going to be doing it a lot more in this one. Both to showcase it and to actually use it. So now we have Juggle and Baffle card. Pierre, it gets li it's like a... I guess it's kind of like a circus thing. You get lots of card abilities and things like Juggle and Backstab and Sword Dance. As you can see, Juggle is pretty good. It's more powerful than flare, which you would have in her default. I'm sure it became obvious over the course of the game, but I have the move synergy set to the L button. I kind of did it really fast when I set it up in the first one, didn't explain it. That's why I was using move all the time without actually opening the menu, because it's a the most used synergy in the game. And I set Whirlwind to the er, reveal to the R button because that's probably the second most used one. And up here we have a Mercury to Ginny, but we can't get to him yet because we don't have a way to extend this rope. But we will soon. We still got a ways to go before reaching level 6, so I guess we're not going to be able to get there before fighting the boss. Normally I might do a little bit of grinding just for that one level, but for the sake of pacing I'm just going to go through with it. So here it says that the uh, the cauldron is really hot, so you can't move it normally, you gotta use move. And when we head up here, we have the first boss battle. They're not that tough. But they will heal each other, kind of like the bandits from the first game, which is somewhat annoying when you just want to get it over with. And we've taken out the first one. Or the second one, I guess. He's in the middle. Jenna just ran out of synergy points, but uh, we can just attack this guy and he'll die pretty quick. And that gets everybody to level 6.
Shiba did not learn anything. Jenna learned avoid, which can be useful when you're just... It avoids random encounters, so that can be useful when you're gonna get through places quickly. And Felix learned Spire, which is a single target earth ability. It will be useful in some places. Well, this guy thinks we're his student that he sent in, but... Nope, we're just people who snuck into his temple. And what I'm going to be doing a lot here is disagreeing with Kraden, because there's a particular scene later in the game where he gets really mad at you if you disagree with him a lot. And so right now we get Lash, it's kind of like when we got uh, the Frost Gem or the Douse Drop in the first game where you just equip it and it teaches you a synergy. This is kind of a lie, it never really changes. You use Lash for one thing the entire game. All you use it for is to extend ropes. One thing that kind of bugs me is these inscriptions on the wall, they look kind of like gladiators posing like they're women. And it looks to me like they're wearing a helmet, but then they're making that pose. It's always bugged me. And we're gonna give this to Shiba just because, like Ivan, she has a really high synergy point pool. And now that we have it, we're gonna head back down into the cave. the Dijini we missed. Hopefully he won't run away, because as you may remember, those things tended to run away from me a lot. Especially that stupid Jupiter Dijini in Ultimiller Cave. Jenna doesn't really have enough synergy to use Juggle, which is kind of a shame, because Water is weak against fire. I would have liked to take advantage of that weakness. Oh, and he tried to run, but he didn't get away, luckily. That would have been really annoying. So unlike normal classes where you class up every time you get two of a Dijini, the special three classes that you get from items like the Pierret, 
will upgrade when you have one of each Dejeni that isn't your element. For example, Jenna is a fire adept, so you would want to give her one earth, one wind, and one water to upgrade the Pierrot. And you can do that up to three times, because you there's actually a max of nine Dejeni per person in this one. So you get three of each element for the highest rank. This means that we can actually give the water to Jenny to the fire person without messing with their class. Now that the whole meditation thing is over, you can come in through the uh, front door. But we won't ever have to go back there. Now that we have Lash, we can head over here to the um, Shrine of the Sea God to rescue these two. These are the kids that were mentioned in the town. They were missing. That one got stuck up on the cliff. And off to the right there, it's just a dead end. He's standing there wondering how he can get his friend out. There's no reason to go over there. That critter is a Dijini. As you can see, it's a windage Jenny. Kind of got to chase him around. He goes the long way around, but you can try to just head to the left. It'll take you to the same place. Gotta go up here and cross the bridge first for him to show up down there. Now 
Now for this part, it's a fairly obvious solution. You kind of chase him around and he keeps hopping over the uh, little gap there. So you just push this block forward. And then he can't get away. Unless he runs, of course. And you have to redo this. Just like the other one, he tries to run, but he doesn't get away, luckily. I'm just gonna use Retreat to get out of here quick. We'll come back here later for a different objective, but that's not until a while further in the game. And now that we've uh, rescued them, the town kind of moves forward a little bit. Most of the puddles have dried up. Now there's just little drops remaining. If you go up here, you get an optional scene with Alex. I'd be fine with Alex coming with us. He could be our water adept. But he chooses not to. Looks like a good place to stop, so we're gonna save our game here and pick things up next time.